Good evening, and welcome to What's Your Story? I'm James Ransom Reed, Jr., your host. We have a very special guest tonight on the show. You're going to enjoy this. So please take your time, sit back, relax. My guest tonight is Diana Dukesa Kurz. She's going to tell you who she is, what she does, and she's going to talk to you tonight about a very, very special program that she has been involved with since the beginning. Diana, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, please tell us about the program that I have kept secret from the audience. <laughs> well, the program is called Cherish Our Children. It's a walk to remember children of any age who have died any time. Our funeral homes um, started the program with some bereaved parents. What is your funeral home? Dukes of Family Funeral Homes. Okay. I'm a funeral director, and our family owns the two funeral homes in Newington and New Britain. Okay. And... Um, you know, the loss of a child is probably one of life's most painful and difficult things for a family to go through. And although we try hard to help a family through that difficult time, no one really understands the loss like another parent. So we wanted to do more for families to offer them a chance to grieve together with others. So back about... 20 years ago now, maybe 21 years ago, uh, we started a walk to remember children who have died. And it, it begins at the funeral home, and uh, we, the first couple of years, the walk went to a local park in Newington, and we had a program there. And we gathered, in order to prepare the most meaningful event for parents and others, we reached out to bereaved parents and asked them to come together with us and talk about some of the things that they felt would be helpful for them or would be meaningful for them. And so we tossed around a, a few ideas, and we came together with a really wonderfully um, meaningful program. So when we first started the walk, we heard from parents who hadn't said their child's name in years. We heard from mothers who, when they lost their baby, you know, maybe 30 years earlier or 40 years earlier, they were told to just everything would be okay, they could have other children and to move on. And they couldn't get past the loss of that baby or their child. And so writing their name on the form that we asked was the first time that they had written their name. It was the first time they heard their child's name being read or said in all those years. So it really, it really was a conviction to us as to the importance of this program. And so we felt, you know, after these first two years, it was something we really wanted to continue with. And we ultimately, um, brought in, raised funds, and erected a ch uh, Christmas box angel statue, which is part of the Richard Paul Evans Foundation, something that um, people could look up and read about. But the town of Newington was wonderful, and they allowed us to place it on the entrance to West Meadow Cemetery, which is a municipal cemetery. So I think it was in 2002, uh, we had the dedication, and that walk probably brought in around five or 600 people. Now, our walk is open to anyone from anywhere to remember their children. The, the walk, um, generally 200 or 300 people come, depending on the day, depending on the loss, depending on um, the weather. When is it normally held? It's it, now we've we've pretty much determined that it's always going to be uh, the week after Labor Day weekend. So whenever that, it, it, whenever lab, whatever September. Labor Day weekend falls, yes, yes, it's that next weekend in September. And um, the 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 general purpose for the walk is not only to remember children who have died, but there are many parents, mothers and fathers grandparents who they're not going to go to a support group. It's hard to find a support group just for, you know, parents who have lost children. Um, the Compassionate Friends, of course, is a wonderful place to turn to, wonderful people to reach out to, um, and they've been great supporters of our walk. Uh, but uh, we wanted to be able to have a place where 
parents could just be. They could walk, they could attend the program, they could hear their ch child's name read, they could place a flower at the angel, and they could also hear some um, you know, music by live performers. We release doves. Um, a parent or another, uh, usually a family member who has lost a child, speaks at the program, as, as did you. Um, and so the day has become very, very meaningful and an annual event for many parents who have lost children. I mean, this is the day that they set aside to remember their children. The other great purpose of this is oftentimes you'll see um, parents walking to remember a child and they're surrounded by other family members or other friends who are just there. They're walking with them to support them. You know, they know that words are meaningful, but they're not enough. And so their presence, just being there, is very, very important to families who have lost a child. So we have found that being surrounded by others who are the only people who really knows what this pain feels like, um, and just being able to be without having to say anything or do anything, but just remember and be surrounded by others who are expressing their love and who understand your grief. Uh, has just meant the world to so many people. And how long, this has been more than, what, 20 years? Yeah, in 2002, we put up the Christmas box angel, and we started the actual walk, though, two years before that. And people from all over Connecticut and even New England have attended. Um, there are people who have driven in from New York. They come down from New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Uh, either they've heard about the walk or they have, you know, a family member who's, who's walking and, um, you know, it's, it's that meaningful. I had the privilege of attending um, a couple of those, mm -hmm. at which I did speak at one. And the thing that struck me was the instant connection that everybody had yeah. because we knew why we were there. We knew that how we were suffering. Yeah. And by the way, for disclosure to the audience, I did lose a child. So I want the audience to understand that's why I was there trying to, to, to grope and grasp and deal with that loss. And I heard about this program and I went and it was the best thing I ever did. So if you're out there and you're suffering and your feeling are still raw and you're hurt, Think about this, it's in September, like she said. Come together with people who know what you're feeling that words can't express. You really should think about it, join them, and do what you can. You know, your tears heal somebody else. Mm. You can believe that, it's the truth. A hug heals somebody else. And that's what we got going on there. And I just absolutely, absolutely encourage you if you uh, have lost a child, please uh, think about this for next September. Give Diana a call and uh, she can hook you up. But have you heard parents, have they told you their special stories about going to this event? What yeah. stories have you heard? Yes, um, we've heard so many wonderful things from parents who never heard of anything like this and were so happy that they came. Um, many were a little bit afraid to come or a little bit hesitant to come. Why do you think they were afraid? Well, they didn't, they didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very personal thing. You know, it is. I, and you know this as well as anyone. You know, parents who have lost children have told us that others, friends, well-meaning friends and acquaintances or coworkers, don't know what to say, so they don't say anything. Yes. You know, so they don't say their child's name because they're afraid maybe it'll upset someone. Yes. And they avoid talking about their child yes. because, yes. and that's not what a grieving parent needs. No. You know, they want to be able to talk about yes. their children. If, and if others could only knew that, know that and feel comfortable reminding a, a, a grieving parent about the fun they had or the times they spent or what yeah. they did or just asking how they're doing or sharing their child's name. It just, it, it, you know, those things go a long way in helping, you know, a grieving parent or grandparent, you know, or sister, brother, a sibling, you know, get through this time. And, you know, you, you never get past it, of course. You learn to live with, with this loss. But um, so, so they were a little bit hesitant because they were, you know, they were just not sure of what the day would bring. And many of them 
again and again, they are so grateful. They're so thankful yes. that we have this, that they can come next year, that um, that their children, you know, gained something from being there, uh, that it was uplifting, that it was sad, but that it was so meaningful. Um, you know, I think they felt that they were really, it was a moment to be able to celebrate their child's life in a free way where other, there's no judging, there's no, it's just a beautiful day. And, um, you know, even even the the release of the doves uh, yes, is very that. symbolic. I That's, did love the release of yep, the doves. I did. We yeah. do release doves uh, uh, as long as you know the weather is not Absolutely. too overcast yep. and they can yep. home, go back home again. Yep. Um, but even that song that we always uh, release that the doves to is. Um, is called Fly by Celine Dion. And she actually um, performed that song in memory of her niece. Uh, um, so it, even the song itself is, is, um, has some meaning yeah, to it. Yeah, it's rooted in, mm. in, in similar mm -hmm. circumstances, yep. yes. And you know, of course, the music that we choose with our vocalist and uh, is just beautiful. It's, I, I, everything is, is made to, everything is coordinated so that, um, we have the needs of grieving parents, you know, in mind. And so there's no charge for it. And we just felt that this is something that we really needed to do and felt good about doing for the community and parents. The, the uh, name of this show is What's Your Story? And what I found attending one of those Cherish the Children events, people wanted to tell their stories about their children. Yeah. I think you are so spot on right when you say that well-intentioned people, I mean, they, they, they mean well, but they, they don't know how or what to say or what to do. And as a result, it becomes that the child who is gone was never here. Yeah. And that child was here. Yeah. That child was held. That child was cradled. That child was loved. Right. And there are memories that parents have of their children good memories that they want to talk about that makes them feel better. Right. It's a medicine, right. really, to do that. Yeah. And uh, that's why when I was privileged and you asked me to speak, I talked about my daughter with her pink wig. Uh, she loved that pink <laughs> wig. And uh, when she put that thing on, her eyes got big as silver dollars, and she had a smile from here to Oklahoma. <laughs> I mean, she just loved that wig. Yeah. And I, I'd take it off of her before she'd go to bed, and I'd go upstairs, and she had it back on sleeping. <laughs> you know, uh, my daughter, by the way, her name was Karina Aliyah, and uh, we lost her to suicide. And that's something else I think we want to talk about to you tonight, if you are listening and viewing this show. Suicide is hard. It's hard to face the fact and live with the fact that your child took his or her life. That's extremely difficult for not only your child, but anybody in the family, but particularly a child with so much promise, so much youth, so much life to live. I've had parents say to me, if I had only, if I had only, I could have I think that's a torture you subject yourself to needlessly. I think what I feel about it, my daughter committing suicide, I had that feeling initially, because I'm her father. And there's a, there's a father in me, and it's always going to be there. If I had only been there, there's a way to heal and to move beyond that. You have to be ready to do so. And I was. And going to this event, talking about the pink wig, <laughs> talking about my daughter and how funny she was, it, it just took a burden off of me in my heart that perhaps we could pass on to you through this medium of television. We are so happy. I'm happy to have Diana here to talk about that. There's something else about that Cherish the Children, Diana, that really, really st stuck in my mind. The quiet, yeah. the moment of quiet, yeah. when the names of the children are read. Yeah. Um, and that is something that um, you, you ask what kind of feedback we've received. And that is one of the things that f people, families, um, and, and their, you know, their support system who are walking with them are, are just so 
grateful for that we actually read the child's name out loud. And at that time, they walk up to the angel and a uh, place of, of, you know, a flower there with a little personal message at the angel, as you know. They find that to be very profound and very meaningful. And it you, you, it, it just is, you know, and, and to your comment about um, uh, families who have lost loved ones to suicide, there are a lot of families who, who attend the walk whose children have um, died from suicide. And this is a, a way that I think they just feel, and clearly it's happening, the support there is is very remarkable, I, I think, especially um, in that regard, because there's a lot of unanswered questions, and it's just nice to know that others are have the same feelings and, and understanding. Now, over the years, I would imagine, like you said, people come from everywhere. They drive from out of state mm -hmm. to, to attend this. When you saw, I remember talking with you a couple of years ago, and you said, and I'm trying to quote you now, but you said, that the funeral service itself wasn't enough. Right. It wasn't the closure that people needed in order to begin to the healing process. Right. You know, and it's funny uh, in an ironic kind of way because we think of a funeral as that's it. You know, right. uh, you know, it's done. You grieve. You bury. You move on. It's not true. It's just the first step. It's step one. It's the Elaborate first step. Elaborate on that a little bit, please. Uh, a funeral for anyone is the first step in recognizing and um, believing that a death has occurred. You know, it's a way to receive support and love, and it's a way to um, say goodbye. But especially in the loss of a child, it's so unfamiliar. It's just life is not supposed to happen this way. Exactly. So everything is turned upside down. That is correct. So yes. the, 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 the sense of trying to grieve over the loss of a 90 year old parent is one thing. Not that that's, it's never easy to say goodbye. Absolutely. But that's yes. kind of like the way of the world. That's what we prepare ourselves for. Exactly. Right. But to lose a child before their prime, and, and the walk remembers a child of any age. So it's not just um, a miscarriage, it's not just a newborn baby or, or a young child or a, a teen or a, someone in their young adults. The walk is for people who have lost children who are still parents and siblings of someone who may be 30, 40 or more. Um, a parent is never supposed to lose a child, and that's just the You're way right. it's not supposed to happen life that shouldn't way. be this way. Yeah. So that's why um, as meaningful as a ceremony might be, as beautiful as a funeral might be, whether there's a religious component or not, mm -hmm. um, it's, it is just the very start of a, of a lifetime of trying to live without your child, you know, and, and it's, it's the hardest thing ever, you know. And so... Uh, you know, so the walk has just given, um, and, and we, and so much, it's, it's given so much to families along the way. And what we're so um, grateful for is that families keep on coming back. So you know that it, you know, and, and they'll come back for, some people have just never missed one walk for all these years. Um, other families will come for a whole number of years and then they're, they're better, they're okay. And they can, you know, they can, do okay, and some will come to the walk whenever it w fits in with you know whatever they have going on or however it works for them. Um, but we've got nothing but really very very wonderful comments. The other thing about it is um, the walk is less than a mile from our funeral home up to West Meadow Cemetery. Yeah. Um, but some people can't walk. They might have. Um, physical disabilities or they're too elderly or, yep, yes, um, you yep, know, yep. for whatever reason, they don't want to walk. Many people will just go up and meet us right at the cemetery where they register That's up important there. to say that there's parking yeah, there's, that you can get, yep, get there. Yes. There's parking there and we've got staff and, and um, volunteers there as well to help um, guide people to the, to the appropriate place. But um, it, it doesn't have to be a walk. Sometimes people just like to go to the program or th that's all they can really do is attend the program. Um, and they find a shady spot and, 
you know, and, and just be, you know, with the memory of their child. The first time I went to your, uh, your Newington office, the uh, funeral home, and the first time I attended uh, the uh, event, I remember being struck by walking in and looking around and saying, this is not a funeral home. What's, hmm. this is, what's going on here? Hmm. You know, they have funerals here? I remember that. And I remember all the flyers and the, 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 the information you had for people to, to take for different aspects of their lives in dealing with, with death. Right. You know, how did you come about that? Did you always have that prior to the walk? or We've always. Um well, when you walk in and say it's not a funeral home, we designed the funeral home to feel comfortable. Wow, you did a great job. It, you know, the me. lobby's kind of like like an inn, you know? Yeah, it's exactly how you know, I just, felt. You feel good about it. But, um, but yes, we've always tried to provide information for people so that, um, you know, reading some good comments or reading from experts or just a little, a little brochure about... Um, you know, all kinds of um, causes of death or reasons um, for loss or how to carry on. Exactly. You know, yes. um, supporting hospice and what to expect from hospice. And um, we just felt that that's always been important. And now, of course, on our website, we have a whole, you know, collection of articles and information there as well. Tell, pe tell people about the website. Our website is duksa.net, D U K S A.net. Okay. So there's information there. We also feel it's real important to um, help children understand death. You know, for years ago, children all went to funerals, you know, generations ago. Yeah. That was part of your life, yes, was to yes. be part of a funeral and say goodbye to loved ones, say goodbye, grandparents yes. and all. Yes. Um, but as the years have gone by, um, many parents have a fear of bringing their children to the funeral home. Um, they would rather they stay home or try to, you know, not talk about it. Sure. So yeah. we feel it's very, very important to provide information, good information to share with them so that they can understand that, um, you know, encouraging your children to be part of, a, of, a, of this saying goodbye okay. time uh, could be very beneficial to the children. So we're planning again in September yep. for another one. Yep. And uh, all people need to do is go on your website, check it out, and find out where, when, and how to attend. That's right. And okay. they can always call with any questions all at right. all. Okay. It's been a pleasure having you, you here. It's Thank my you pleasure. so very, very much, Thank Diana. You. That's our show for tonight. What's your story? Everybody has a story. What's yours? I'm your host, James Ransom Reed, Jr. Good night. <laughs>